Uncle Again Saints. I want to thank everyone for tuning in to another Thursday night Bible study where we're going over the doctrine of who God has called us to be. And we're looking in the epistle of the Ephesians. We're looking at Ephesians survey, and this is lesson 14, the Ephesians survey. And this is lesson 14 we are looking at. And we are looking at the adoption of children. And we're looking at his glory. It's to his good glory and pleasure. His good pleasure and his good glory. But in any event, it is to it is all to our benefit and to our glory and praise and our and our success. And and the things that we're looking at here, and we're looking at a, a particular section of it, and I'm, I'll give you that now. We're looking at a particular section um, here from verses 1 all the way to verse, down to verse 10. And every time you see when Paul says, Paul gives you a list of all the provisions, all the spiritual blessings that God had, has provided for us, he'll say that in the dispensation of the fullness of times, or in other words, to that intent, he did all these things to that purpose. But what we have to understand is that God provided for us. And as I said before, he's, he's left us equipped with his word. You know, and, and, and again, as I liken it to our children or our parents themselves who have told us or we, we've told our children the things to equip them with the, with the rigors of, the, of, of this life all the things that might that they might face in this world so they can succeed to their benefit you know god uses the word it's all spiritual blessings and we have to think why so that we can enjoy um uh, he's provided something for us to physically enjoy while he on this earth no we're not given the things that man assumes that we that 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 we see today Man, man wants to tie certain things to God as a blessing, whether it's home, uh, wealth, um, health, wealth, um, spouses, and, 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 and things that we can see. When you're told not to hope for that, you, you're told to hope for that you see not. You're told to set your affection on things above. You're told where you're, what is a true blessing, and it all concerns your inner man. Any and every blessing that you're going to have today concerns your inner man, concerns your inner man. The only blessing that we have that is of a carnal nature that we can have in front of us is the Bible. But it contains spirit. It contains God's word, the living word, of the living, living God that can live within us when we read it. But again, this is what he's equipped us with. And many times we don't like to look at 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 this type of provision that God has made for us because we've been living onto this world so much that we get we, we get tied up in what a true what good is what is a, a so-called blessing or or a, a benefit it always concerns our flesh or the flesh of others and even if it's if it's us doing for others we'll get the praise we're, we're looking for the praise we're looking for uh, someone to 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 give you a pat on the back but that's that gives you that you can boast in that. Well, let's just get right into the study here. But what we're going to look at is is all the provisions that God has has made for His faithful sons, His faithful saints, ones that are that that He has predestinated will be part of the adoption of son, adoption of children. That they that that they would um, that that there's going to be a, a purpose. We're going to see that. Uh, in verse 10, but it doesn't only pertain to a future glory, but it pertains to a present glory as well. It pertains to something that God is accomplishing today. We seen that when we looked at uh, when we looked at it earlier about when He said, Can, "Have you considered my servant Job? There's none like him in all the earth." And that brought forth present glory to to, to God. And, and, and we see that in our epistles, too, when we see Paul say that uh, uh, the devil can speak reproachfully. Well, if he can speak reproachfully of our present life as saints, wouldn't there be glory 
as, as when the father told, uh, said, this is my son in whom I, I am well pleased. And we're told uh, unto all well pleasing well, the, the things that we do. That's because it's a present glory as well. We are made a spectacle unto the world, men and angels. The manifold wisdom of God may be, be, be known by the church. It, it can be put, it can be made known in our lives. But we are given a provision by our Father, and we'll, we'll get into that. Come over to uh, chapter 5. Verse 5, sorry. Chapter 1, verse 5. Ephesians 1, verse 5. Having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will. We just went over a little bit of that and we've been going over that um, in the past few few weeks now. And this is said, this says here, uh, what God has done but before the foundation of the world, you're going to see uh, in verse 4 it said that, but... He's predestined. He has a plan. It's his will. It's the it's according to the good pleasure of his will that he is doing these these things. And you know, as I said, with our children and with us as parents, it's to our our good pleasure that our children be better or more than we have been in our lives. You know, I don't care how evil the parent is. He all oh, he he or she. When they are in the lives of their kids, I'll just say that, always desire the best for their children. You know, and even the ones that aren't in the in the lives of the children, I hate to speak on speak for them, um, but and when I well, but they they too um, don't want their children to be a failure. Even if they whether a child they have a child born or born yet or not even to be parents or parents that are just say people that aren't even parents yet would desire that the ones that they have would be great, would be far better than they are. Look at uh, verse six to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved. He hath made us accepted in the beloved. When you see that to the, um, According to the good pleasure of his will and good pleasure of his will, it hath made us accepted in the beloved. And it, it, it talks about the provision, about what what uh, what was given to us. Uh, those who will accept, who will accept being that faithful son, what you've been provided. And, and, and it's all been made uh, possible by what Jesus Christ accomplished and also by what God has accomplished for us as as a father unto us and that we we can be accepted in the beloved and as he made us whereas and, and if we're accepted it's something it we are well pleasing unto him and we, we looked at the verses and, and and you don't have to turn there but when in second Corinthians chapter 6 that for instance to just one verse in particular there's many more. There's many more. Ephesians chapter 4, uh, Colossians chapter 3, if Ephesians 5. It speaks of uh, saints, faithful sons being what God called us to be. And it's well pleasing unto him that we be what he's designed, what the provision he's made for us. But what we're going to do, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to, don't want to move too fast, but we're going to, move through this a little a little with more i don't want to even use the word haste but uh just move, spend not so much time you know uh going over what we've covered so let's move on what we're going to look at i'm going to want to always keep in in your mind verses five and six so we're going to look at some verses uh like i said, said we're not going to spend too much time on it but i want to keep in your mind verses 5 and verses 6, because it's vital that we understand this. Vital that we understand this until, you know, when we move on to verses 7, 8, 9, and then eventually verse 10. But let's look at that. Having, uh, verse 5, having predestinated us unto adoption of children uh, by Jesus Christ to himself, 
according to the good pleasure of his will. And again, it's by Jesus Christ, but it's also to himself for a purpose. And the purpose is of his will. I mean, it's it's of his will. It's the good pleasure of his will is the purpose. Look at verse 6. To the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved. He's made us something because we did, he designed that we be more than just justified unto eternal life. Look at Colossians chapter 1. And these are more verses that um, coincide, that, 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 can, that show um, the, it's by his good pleasure. Look at uh, Colossians 1. For this cause we also, verse 9. For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that ye might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that ye might walk worthy of the Lord unto, notice this, all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work, increasing in the knowledge of God. Now see, that, that's what you see here. And when we get to verse uh, 7 and 8 and 9, and we will in a second, you're going to see about how he abounded toward us in all wisdom, how it made known unto us the mystery of his will and all these things according to the, his good pleasure. And, and, and it all goes with, with this here. It all goes to what you see here. But it's all unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work, increasing in the knowledge of God. This is, this is, this is all well pleasing to the Father. That's why Paul desires that we might be filled with all the knowledge of his will and all wisdom, spiritual understanding, because Paul was. Paul knew what God, what was well pleasing unto him. He knew that, as you see, um, well, as we, yeah, well, as you see here, that it is, it's the good pleasure of his will that we be what you see here in, in Colossians one. And, and being strengthened with all might according to his glorious power. That, that's all that he prevent. That's what he provides for us. Being fruitful in every good work, increasing in the knowledge of God. Don't we desire our children? Wouldn't it be well pleasing unto us if, if they walked worthy of us unto all pleasing? If they were fruitful in everything we taught them? Wouldn't we want them to increase in our knowledge? Wouldn't we want them to be filled with all our knowledge according to our will in all our wisdom and our spiritual understanding? Our understanding? Of course we would. That's what this is going after. We desire that they too be strengthened with all our might. And I'm not talking about, and we wouldn't be talking about a physical might. Well, the men would, but we would want them to, to be strong in all we taught them to be. They, whenever they, they, they've uh, been, whenever they've been down before, whenever they, they cried about something or whatever, we would want them to remember what we taught them to make them stronger. But that's what. Look at verse 11, strengthen with all might according to his glorious power unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness. Now see, that's, that takes a lot of strength when you can go through long suffering with patience and joyfulness. Look at uh, verse 12, giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. Now, notice verse 12 and compare that with verse uh, Ephesians 1 verse 6, when it says he had made us accepted in the beloved. And then verse 12, which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. You know, when you see have made us to be partakers of the inheritance in, with, in the saints, with, you know, that's not talking about a future. There, there is future there. It, there is an element of it there. Because the, again, as I said before, what we do, and I just put it in a simpler perspective, what we do in this life as sons, adult sons in Christ, mature 
perfect sons in Christ, it all goes toward a benefit of, re of reward in heavenly places. And, and why we're going over this, we don't want to always assume every time you see God's word, you assume it always concerns justification unto eternal life and skipping over sanctification and going to your heavenly, heavenly glory and heavenly hope and not understanding that there is present glory for us and our father. And it's also present, present, uh, um, everything we see, it, it, there is present tense, salvation from sufferings, present tense, glory in our sufferings, present tense, just uh, um, justifying uh, when it comes to his word. And what I mean by justifying, we can be counted just or righteous in things of this life. But let's uh, let's move on. Come over to um, your, well, you're looking at Ephesians, but come back, uh, looking at, we're going to look at Ephesians 1 again, and then we're going to go to Colossians 1, verse 26. Okay, look at, um, look at Ephesians 1, verse 5 again. Having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will. Uh, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he has made us accepted in the beloved. Now, again, to the praise of the glory of his grace. And that's what I mean about a present glory. A present grace. Even in most, all we look, only look at these things when it concern justification unto eternal life and our vocation. But, what this is when it says according to the good pleasure of his will to the praise of the glory of his grace there's present glory of his grace and there's future and there's also past glory as well as we, we know but again look at first look at colossus chapter one look at verse 26. even the mystery which hath been hid from generations but now is made manifest to his saints. This was in times past where it was hid from ages and generations. But now, present tense, it's made manifest to his, to his notice this, saints. Well, you know, a lot of people would assume that justification unto eternal life concerns a way that one person is justified and unto eternal life and and Israel was justified unto eternal life differently if they think they were justified at all sometimes. And but this is saying to his saints, it's made manifest to his saints. And that's what Paul did. Once Paul got people justified unto eternal life by preaching unto them who Christ Jesus is and the redemption that is in them, but he first makes mention to them that they are sinners in need of salvation. Then he would give them the sanctifying doctrine of the mystery. After. And that's why he, what he did with King Agrippa. With Agrippa, he didn't explain the mystery to him. He only wanted to know what he wanted to know among him was Christ and him crucified. That's all. That's what he wanted to know. And that's what we do. We don't go right to someone explaining to them uh, the sanctifying doctrine of the mystery. We explain to them first how to get saved, that there are sinners in need of salvation. But let's let's move on. I don't want to spend too much time on that. Uh, look at verse 27. To whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. And as it says, it's talked about before, and as it says here, to whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles? That is, the justified Gentiles, which is Christ in you. You know, difference between being in Christ and having Christ in us. There's a difference to that. Christ in us is sanctification. The hope of glory. And, and that hope of glory, present glory. And, and notice... What is the riches of the glory 
of this mystery, that's concerning saved people. That's concerning people that are going to get sanctified, but that's glory. That, that's, there's present glory. Look at verse 28, whom we preach one in every man, teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Christ. And notice the every man. That's every creature which is under heaven, as we've seen. That Paul would, would make known um, every justified creature. That, that Paul's uh, preaching sanctification unto holiness to. And he's making known the what is the what is the riches of that of that gospel, and, and but it's to a purpose. It, it's according to his good pleasure, and in the verses that we've seen before, we're going to look at them in a second. The verses, as in verse eight, uh, Ephesians one verse eight, when it says, "Where until he hath bound abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence, prudence, having made known unto us the mystery of his will." Known knowledge, wisdom, wisdom and prudence. There is there is a desire that we know something, but it, but it is it is a, it is vital that we know something, know His will. But what I want to do is uh, take a look at Romans eight. You can turn there uh, in the meantime. Romans chapter eight. Give you a chance to do that there. But what we're going to do, we're going to go back and look at Romans eight. And not spend a lot of time, as I said before, but go to Romans 8 and look at the context of the adoption of sons and look at the present glory and the future glory. But notice it's going to be all to the praise and glory of the Father's will. And there's also to, to the creature, to, to the will of the creature who has been subject to vanity. But we're going to look at that. Come now, Let's take a look at that now. Come over to Romans 8. Look at verse 14. Romans 8, verse 14. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. When you're led by his word, you are the sons of God in this context here. For, uh, ye, for ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. That's small case S. But ye have received the spirit of adoption, large case S. Whereby we cry, Abba, Father, that's the living word of adoption that we have received, his word, where we, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Uh, verse 16, the spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. And again, we looked at the um, little definition of um, context. And what I mean by definition of context, what I mean is learning to understand that context trumps your way of thinking. Context trumps the Greek manu, the, the Greek uh, uh, Greek scholars today, people that, that 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 think they have to turn to the Greek to get understanding. And that is and that is very foolish because they they bypass the old English, which the OED would be a better dictionary to go to a better source than going to the Greek. You go in, you're looking at the Greek way of understanding things. You, you gotta, you're bypassing what these words meant at the time when they, uh, when, when they translated this and, and you're, you're going to, again, it's, that's another study in itself, but I'm saying that to say this here. People have a problem with the word sons, children, heirs, and that's all because of, of, of being wise in their own conceits. You look at the context of what's being shown here. These children here is different from the children in Ephesians chapter 4. <coughs> Excuse me. Ephesians 4, when it says that we be no more children tossed to and fro. Here, children and heirs is different. And even joint heirs is not the same as being a heir in this context, because joint heir, joint heir with Christ is being associated with something else. Sufferings is what's going to be spoken about from the duration of verse 17. It's going to be first the sufferings of this present time, 
than the sufferings of Christ. But also it even deals with the sufferings of the creature itself. It, there's, there's sufferings associated with this. This is not talking about joint heirs with Christ as being because we're saved. And, and this in the context, oh, it's talking about you're you're with you're in in him, you're a child with Christ. And and again, that's just poor Bible handling is what it is. But look at um look at verse 18, for I reckon that this and, and verse 17, the end of it, when it says that we may be also glorified together, as I said before, there's present glory, future glory. Look at verse 18, for I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. As I said, and, and, and you want to know, when I said before about the present, future, in, in the context here, there's present and future. There's even, there even, there's even talked about uh, uh, children and heirs and joint heirs with Christ. And for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. He's talking to justified people, but justified people don't have to be. But when they are led by the Spirit of God, they, in the future, are something else. Look at, look at uh, verse uh, 19 now. For the earnest expectation of the creature waited for the manifestation of the sons of God. Now why? Why, why is there an earnest expectation of the creature? Why is the creature, the cre creation itself, waiting for the manifestation? Because Ephesians, and we'll get to this when we get to uh, 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 verse 10. We'll probably deal with this next week. When it says that in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather together, get together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and are on the earth. Well, that's what this is now talking about here. And we'll deal with that. I don't want to go too much into it now because uh, we'll deal with that then. And it's going to be, we want to take a look at different aspects, too, of the creature itself. Uh, the um, why in the dispensation of the fullness of times. Why all this is to his good pleasure. Well, it's also to the creature's good pleasure. One, and, and part of the creature, angelic realm, they're part of it. You got, you look in the book of Psalms and many other places, it talks about uh, the the hills and, and the and the val the, the hills and the moon and the stars and all the the creature is gonna uh, glory and, and have joy because it's gonna go back to God's design plan that it be. But look at verse uh verse 20 for the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by the reason of of him who hath subjected the same in what? Hope. Whose hope? Their hope. They sub he subjected the same in hope. It's a future hope there. Um, because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. Now that delivered, that's a kin word to salvation. As I said before, you got to look at the context there. But the creature is waiting, okay, is waiting for God, waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God here. And as I said before, there are different aspects to our being sons. We can be future sons now. We can be future, we can, well, present sons now. And then future sons in, in, in the time to come. In, in, in the ages to come there. But looking at what's being said here, and pretty soon we're just going to go, what I want to do is uh, get our, make our way up to verses 7, 8, and 9. And then, and then we're going to look at some of the context there. Because some of the, some of the things that, and this will be our first time in the sense of getting to that 7, 8, and 9, and then leading up to verse 10. But it's all a um a package of, of 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 doctrine here from verse 1 Ephesians 1 1 down to Ephesians 10 Paul 
well, nine, and then we get to verse, uh, verse 10, that in the fullness of times, you, you, you're going to see that there. But again, as I said before, you're going to see this is to our, um, it's a provision he's made for us. And, and it's, it's according to his good pleasure, but it should be glorious unto us. It should be well-pleasing unto us as well. But again, folks, we can know the doctrine, but sometimes it takes a little time to actually put it on. It takes a little time to allow it to work effectually within us. And this is what Paul is telling these Ephesians. Well, it's not exactly what he's telling them, but it, it, when he says his, his desire, it's his prayer that these things be, be uh, that these provisions, um, that the saints partake of this, that they allow it to work within them. Let's, let's move on. Let's look at that. Look at Ephesians 5. Ephesians 1 verse 5. Having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace wherein he has made us accepted in the beloved, now notice these three verses here. In whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace. Now, he, what he's doing, he's taking you, as I said before, I need to come up with a word for that. Uh, he's presenting the mercies of God to us. And he's, he, he's, he's presenting unto you what you already have in Christ. And he's going to, he's, he's saying, this is what this is what's yours. And when he's showing you the cross there, it's by that and some more things that he's he, he's he's telling you all he has, all he's given you, all we have already. But then look at what this says, wherein he hath abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence. Now, notice toward us. It, it's not what we have, what we have. In verse 7, in whom we have redemption through his blood. This is what we already have, but not all saints are going to have all wisdom and prudence. But he's abounded toward us. He, he's given us his word. We have his word in front of us. All wisdom and prudence. We have all wisdom. <laughs> it, we can allow it to work effectually within us. Look at verse uh, verse 9. Have he made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to the good to his good pleasure, wherein he hath purposed in himself? And you know, Satan knows too that only a faithful son or a faithful soldier is going to go get what has been abounded toward us, and only a soldier in Christ is going to. Um, allow allow a well seek to know the mystery of his will but all it says according to his good pleasure uh which he hath which he hath purposed in himself it's all according to his good pleasure but not all saints are going to go and 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 take what he hath abounded toward us he, he's he's given us his word we have genesis through revelation there you can go to pretty much any department store. You go to a book section. I'm pretty sure you can find a King James Bible. I'm pretty sure you can. You can go online and go search Amazon or search, search many outlets and find millions and probably billions of King James Bibles. He, he, he's abounded toward us, but not every saint is going to get one. Not every saint is going to even get the, what's called the Bible itself, uh, whatever version, not every saint is going to, not every person is going to get that. But what I'm saying is, it's it's made it's a provision made up, laid up for us. He hath abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence. And those things you've seen there, we're going to look at them again. Uh, he, he he's he's justified us unto eternal life. We have forgiveness of sins uh, through his blood. 
all them things that are given unto us. But what we what we need to understand is that why? And and, and we're gonna look, I want you to take a look at something and then we'll we'll get it, we'll get into we'll get into the 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 why of of verses one through ten there. But verses one through nine. But let's take a look at that. We want to see. We'll just look at the outline. The outline of verses one through nine. And the outline of verses one through nine. And we, um, we just looked at it for a second when you see in verse nine when it says, "Having made known to us the mystery of His will, according to His good pleasure which He hath purposed in Himself." And I'm not. It's not like I'm skipping over. We're gonna look at that in the next. Um, in the next study there, but um, when you look at the outline of verses one through nine, Paul, what Paul is setting forth, one of the first things he sets forth is a difference between saints and the faithful saints. Well, that's what we looked at. Paul mentioned the saints and the faithful saint, the faithful in Christ. And he's, and that's the, that's, that's the one he, um, the faithful in Christ Jesus. Because it is a difference. There, there is a difference of being just justified versus being faithful in Christ Jesus. We also looked at the father of Jesus Christ and our father. Because it makes a difference when you see Paul showing us this in verses 2 and 3. He shows us a distinct, he makes a distinction between God of, the God of our uh the God, well, he says, the God of, um, that the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Then he says, our Father. And then the other thing, uh, looking at, we looked at the provisions he made for us. And that's what we see going all the way through Rome, uh, Ephesians 1, 1 through verse 9. All those spiritual blessings. Then we see the Father's holy plan for us. Because over and over, during this time, we see him say things like in verse 5, to the good pleasure of his will. And then, then it says in um, uh, verse 7, according to the riches of his grace. And verse 9, to the good pleasure of his will. And um other verses when it talks about um, to the glory of his grace he hath made us and all these things it, it, it's it's his provision for us for a purpose the other thing we looked at the fifth thing the adoption of children unto himself by his son and we, we've spent a good time in looking at that the adoption of children the other thing is all things are to his good pleasure. And, and I know, you know, we, I kind of said that up there in verse, in, in the fourth one, but it, it's all, th all of these things, and, and these things are to his good pleasure. Now, the, that's a difference between God's holy plan for us before the world that he predestinated for us. And, 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 and he, and it is to his good pleasure, but he made that provision for us before the foundation of the world. The seventh thing is he provided the knowledge of his will to his faithful sons. He has provided the knowledge of his will and all wisdom, and uh, the mystery made known unto us, the mystery of his will, the, um, the things that he hath um, revealed unto us or have abounded toward us and all those things. But it's, it, it's so we can know him and be and know what he, and be all he called us to be. But then you look at, and as I said before, why? What is the, what is the, um, what's the, I don't want to use the word why of it, but but what's the goal? Well, we know that it's to his good pleasure. And, and, and he wants us to be, he's provided us all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. We know that, um, that 
it's it's according to something he predestinated before the foundation of the world and he desires that uh, we be um, uh, that he has faithful sons and that they be unto the adoption of children because I said before we're gonna now look at why that or, or, or the the next phase in his overall wisdom or well not his overall plan and now he's given us the wisdom in that he's going to in verse 10 he's going to give us the wisdom of of this uh of this plan here and we're going to see that um let's let's take a look at that now let's take a look at that now then um and we've seen we seen the uh we went up to verse 9 and we're going to go back over it before before we we end uh we're going to go back over verses 1 through 10 but let's look at this here in verse 10 Ephesians 1 verse 10 and what we're going to see here that the father is equipping his sons for our present and eternal glory and his glory and his eternal purpose now look at verse 10 that in the dispensation of the fullness of times he might gather together in one all things in Christ both which are in heaven and which are on earth even in him now, I'm not going to spend too much time on this 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 time but next time we're going to be looking at verses verses 7 8 9 and 10 and we're going to be looking at those the next time so that's why I don't want to spend too much time here with that but I want I want to sum up we're summing up verses 1 through 9 is what we're actually doing here and that's the main focus of what's we're doing here <laughs> so so and again as you see here in uh in the fullness of times he he might gather um he might gather together in one all things in christ both which are in heaven and which are on earth but it's all dealing with with god with the father equipping his sons for our present and eternal glory and his glory and his eternal purpose there now again as i said before we're going to look at uh we're going to just sum everything up we're going to go go down a list to verse to verse 10 verse 10 there but as you can see um our father has made um uh, a lot we'll just say all spiritual blessings he's given given to his faithful sons ones that desire to allow it to work effectually and i want to say this here um once we understand the doctrine and many saints do this and and we know they do because paul says know ye not because we ought to know if you've been provided the doctrine there are things that you are you ought to know he told the corinthians he said for we are not ignorant of say of his of satan's devices were they sure they were they, well how can he say they're not we're not ignorant of it because he provided the doctrine he's given them he gave them the doctrine already he you know and paul even told the thessalonians for ye yourselves know that we are appointed unto it on, on onto this those afflictions and sufferings of the, of the gospel and i'm saying all this to say that we can know the doctrine we can see we can see that and every saint who has read ephesians knows knows that he when it says hath abort abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence and and um having made known unto us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure which he purposed purposed in us and and about how we've been given all spiritual uh wisdom and understanding every every person that reads this know they they know that this is talking about god's wisdom god's understanding and especially in in what's being spoken of but it takes time for the saint to to actually allow something to click so to speak when we tell our children things we know it we, we tell them that all the time sometimes we use the word uh well use the saying well they're just going to get out there and 
bump their own head and 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 you know go go through the school of hard knocks or there's certain things that we say that we know we don't want to tell them hey I told you so you know rub it in their face we don't we don't want to do that but they know what we tell them and we know what our father tells us we have his word we know what's what's being said there but what makes things click folks is our love our love for his word and for the father himself and for the what the lord and savior jesus christ did for us and not just for what he did it's for him himself but it's loving ourselves less that's what we have to do we have to be a living sacrifice and many people they do they do this uh, on a constant basis whether it comes to when they go to the military person goes to prison a person um and deals with any other things in life they they know that they have to let go of their past life or what they what the way their life is or was and now they have to walk a new life and it can be even with marriage or or with a relationship that a person is in it, it, anything where you're not doing or living the same life you used to you you put that to to bed so to speak so I'm saying that to say it, our father desires and, and this is what it's with all these things talking about his good pleasure his good to, to his good pleasure to his praise honor and glory why well, not to say praise honor and glory but that's what it's going after and all those things uh, our happiness so to speak our uh, joyfulness is not tied into that when it comes to physically it talks if we looked at the verses when it talks about over uh, Colossians chapter 1, about going through those sufferings with patience and joyfulness, there's where there's joy at, because that's to his good pleasure. We become a living sacrifice. And I'll just say it like this. This, this is, maybe, maybe this can be a better way to, to sum it up. Our Father wants us to be spiritual. And being spiritual, we have to address the spiritual man in the room. And that's in my inner man. And, and, and everything going on with my inner man should concern my father's will. It, can, it should concern him. But when I concern my flesh or I'm in my flesh, I'm actually taking that spiritual man inside of me and allowing him to get smaller and smaller. And... My father's happiness is tied to, he's, he's spiritual. And everything, the life that I'm going to live is a spiritual life. So his, the happiness that, that ought to be concerned with is of spiritual nature only. The joyfulness, the, the um, uh, glory, the salvations, all these things um, all concern a spiritual thing. There's no physical aspect to that. And we can't allow it to be. You know, as I said before, when we when we go, when it comes to our our, our children, our providing for them, we don't, we're not in that equation when it comes to feeding them, you know, and, and, and everything else that that provision made for them. You know, you we make sacrifices for their good. And this is, this is what we have to t understand, that that's what our father did for us. You know, our children don't do that for us when they're, when they're small. But we, out of our own love, do these things for their sake. And, and this is what we're being beseeched to do by these spiritual blessings that we have in Christ Jesus. And understanding what God's overall plan is. But let, let's move on. Come over to uh, Ephesians, Ephesians 1. Let's take a look at verse 1. Ephesians 1, verse 1. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God to the saints which are Ephesus, and to the faithful in Christ Jesus, grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. Now, as you see here, you see Paul 
Paul explaining his apostleship and he's saying, this is written unto, this is to the saints which are Ephesus and to the faithful in Christ Jesus. And that it is God our Father and God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. God being the Father in both aspects to us, to his Son and to us being faithful sons in Christ. Verse uh, 4. According as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Now, again, that's that's the desire and design that we should be holy and without blame before him in his selfless love. And that's that this what goes to the to the um, to the beginning of what Paul is saying here. And, and you know, if you talk with anyone. If you're telling them about how to serve, you're telling any any group of people or just say a church, the first thing you ought to leave, lead off with is selfless love that they ought to operate upon. And that's Christ's love. That's God our Father's love. That's how we ought to, to serve him. And that's, that's what ought to be at the forefront of our service because we're not going to serve him unless we unless we operate upon these these particular things here and that what these particular things are selfless love so let's take a look at um let's take a look at um verse five now and again that we should be holding without blame before him in love having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by jesus christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. As I said before, Paul is laying out what we have. And first he's laying out the um, uh, what, what he has chosen us in verse 4, before him, before the foundation of the world, the, the, the plan that he had for us before the foundation of the world, his desire before the foundation that we be holy without blame before him in love, selfless love, and, and what, he's, what he's predestinated us unto as sons. And then it's to, his, to the glory of his grace, he hath made us accepted in the beloved. Now you see here, he's, now he's laying out the, uh, the mercies that we've been given all these spiritual blessings that we've been given and that's why you see here and the first thing we've been given in whom we have redemption through his blood the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace then you're going to look at verse 8 wherein he hath he hath abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence having made known unto us the mystery of his will according to the good pleasure which he hath purposed in himself now you know if a person went and and said, what are the spiritual blessings in heavenly places? Many people would think that they're what you can see. But, and I said I was going to do this before, just jot down all these things that we have. I mean, uh, when you look at verse uh, verse 4, starting from verse 4, cho he chosen us before him, before the foundation of the world. That's one. Before the foundation of the world, he 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 thought of us to to he thought of sons. That would be holy without blame before him in love. He predestinated us unto the adoption of children. That's two, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace. He hath made us accept and to be loved. That's three. Redemption through his blood. That's four. The forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. Uh, verse, I mean, five, and he abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence. But these are things we can, these are all the provisions that he made for us. But again, verse eight, wherein he hath abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence. All wisdom, that's all his wisdom. Verse nine, having made known, us to, known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he hath purposed in himself according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in himself. 
but made known, us, known unto us the mystery of his will, folks, is what was kept secret and what he, what before the foundation of the world, he kept hid within himself. Look, look at verse 10, and, th and this sums it up of what, of, of what Paul is, is bringing forth right here, verses 1 through 9. That in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him. But notice that in the dispensation of fullness of times, he might gather in one all things in Christ, both are which in heaven, both are which are in heaven and which are on earth on earth. Many times when people um see or think about when they look in God's word of truth and they see the reconciling of things, they only look at uh, the things on earth. They don't look at the things which are in heaven. And what I mean by that, I know people do it today. You have Christians who will say, yeah, we're going to heaven. God has a heavenly hope for us. But before that, before the mystery was revealed unto Paul, um, man only knew that there was a reconciling of the earth back onto himself. Satan knew about that plan. I don't have to get into the mystery of his will um, concerning the mystery of the gospel, but God has uh, had a plan for both the heaven and the earth to reconcile both things. And as I said, um, verse 10, that in the disposition of fullness of times, he might gather together in one. That's all things in Christ, both on earth and both in heaven, because they're both in Christ. They they both will be in Christ and 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 um, and are, but He's going to gather both of them together. But in order to do that, and that's what we're going to look at next time, He has designed sons and 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 faithful sons. Uh, ones that that Gentile saints, sons, ones that Paul makes mention. We just looked at that in Romans chapter eight about the creature waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. They're they're waiting, and we we play a big part in that. We bet we play a big part in what's being shown here uh, that him he might gather together both which are in heaven and which are on earth. We, we play a, a huge role in that. It, it, it is, but not just any old saints. He desires that there be faithful in the principalities, powers, mights, thrones, and dominions. You don't think so? That's why he makes mention of, about it over in, in Ephesians. You don't have to turn there. But in, in um, Ephesians 1, verse, uh, verse 21. Far above all principality, power, might, throne, the dominion, every name that is named. Not only in this earth, in this world, but that which is to come. There, there's a difference between principality, power, might, throne, and dominion. And God desires that we be not just children, be no more children, but sons, perfect, perfect saints, perfect, as he said before, perfect man. That we be brought up unto that. We be, we, 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 it's God's desire that we grow. We be brought forth unto all spiritual understanding. As he said, says in verse 17, uh, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ and the Father of glory may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him, that the eyes of your understanding be enlightened. You may know what is the hope of his calling, what is the riches of the glory of the of his inheritance in the saints what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us word who believe according to the working of his mighty power that's a lot of power that's a lot of might that's a lot of strengthening but again we can accomplish that we can bring that forth we can put the power of god on display it's through us there, there ought to be glory in that we ought to rejoice in that but again we want to get ready to um, um, we get ready to uh, close and um, 
I have to, yeah, <laughs> we're getting ready to close and uh, get, um, we'll, 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 we'll take a look at this next time again in the, uh, in the study there. We'll take a look at that next time and we'll, we'll see what, um, we'll get back to the, get back to the basis of what's going on there. But I want to thank everyone for tuning in uh, to another Thursday Night Bible Study. But until next time, thank you.